uh, we'll continue then. We uh, are in Isaiah 58, and we saw how fasting has to do with um, the motives of our heart, our relationships, um, caring for the poor, the needy, and honoring God. So are there any questions so far? Um, I'll touch two more subjects in this session. That is, um, what, are, what are the needs for which we should fast? We look at that. And then the blessings which follow fasting. So uh, those two things we'll see. But any questions regarding what we have discussed till now, whether here on Campus Batch or online students, you can ask. Okay. Yo, yeah, I didn't see your hand. One hand here. Any any other hand? Maybe I thought I saw. Okay, tell me. Yeah. In fasting, I heard sometimes some people say we should not eat non-vegetarian in fasting. Then is there particular food and what should we eat? If we are in seven days fasting and 14, maybe, or 40 days. Mm. See, uh, what we should eat, what we should not eat, that's a decision you can make led by the Spirit of God. Okay, It's like a personal decision. So if you look at the scriptures, there are some examples. Uh, like um, there were people who did partial fast. You remember Daniel? Daniel and his friends, uh, they gave them meat in uh, Babylon. And they said, we will not eat meat. We will only eat vegetables. Why? Why did they do that? Any idea? They did it because the meat was sacrificed to idols. They did not want to touch anything which was sacrificed to idols. And they only wanted to worship God. So they said, we'll just eat what vegetables and drink water. Because all the other food was very ungodly. So to keep themselves pure for God, they did that. So that's a people today, they call it Daniel fast. So if you go to the internet, you'll find so many Daniel fasts where they only talk about vegetables, like eating only vegetables, no meat. OK, so uh, that's something you can do if you want to do, like a Daniel fast, which is partial fast. But even under that, uh, it depends on, see, fasting is about surrendering to God, isn't it? So uh, maybe for some people, it's not so much about meat or, or anything, but maybe it's about sweets. So they can sacrifice sweets. They'll say, OK, I'm just not going to eat any sweets for God. I will only um, you know, eat other things. So it depends. It, there is no hard and fast rule that you have to eat this, you have to eat that. Okay. So that is partial fast. Complete fast is like how Jesus, we see that uh, uh, Jesus did not eat anything. And uh, at one point, when he was hungry, the word says when he was hungry, then Satan came to tempt him and, and say, you turn these rocks into bread. OK, when it says he was hungry, it means that uh, Jesus was not eating anything 40 days. Absolute fast, right? But there is also another kind of fast. So maybe Jesus was drinking water because most of them, when they did like a long fast, they would drink water and then they would drink, they would not eat food. So uh, even science, right? It says you can you can uh, you can do that kind of fast for a little longer. But if you don't eat food and you don't drink water totally, that's very dangerous for the human body. OK, so that kind of a fast, we call it a dry fast. A dry fast is what uh, Esther did. Esther and her people, she said, no food, no water, three days. That is Esther fast. So Esther fast is a little too much like uh, to for, for the body. Like if your body is not ready for something like that, then we just say you can either start with a partial fast, skip one meal, two meals. Slowly, you can sort of prep your body and your health to handle a fast. Uh, or you can do a complete fast, five days, seven days. Um, even up to 40 days, people do quite safely. If they are healthy, right? they are able to do it. 
and in some instances if you feel the holy spirit is leading you to do a dry fast that will be generally for a very short period of time otherwise you will end up harming your body right so this is also something we have to understand fasting doesn't mean damaging my health why because the body is a temple of the holy spirit i'm responsible to take care of my health got it so fasting is our devotion to god um so you can care for your body also like maybe you know drink a lot of water when you're fasting avoid a lot of tea coffee so those kind of practical things you can do so that you can still be fit and healthy but you're fasting you got it so this is how it goes there is no specification that you should each one you should do this you should do that it has to come from your own heart what you want to fast understood okay good good question any other question fasting yes yeah we can do that also yeah so you're dedicating your time also right so you don't want to spend it with anyone else but you're maybe you lock yourself up in the room and you just pray read the word like that but keep your family informed otherwise they'll be like oh this person is missing so yeah sure yes ma'am uh, some people they will skip the food all the food mm. and they will say uh, we are we are we are in fasting mm. and simply they will go and sleep is there sleep, any use, uh, <laughs> okay is there any use of being fast um see the simple understanding of fasting is devotion to god right where is the devotion if the person is sleeping yeah see. but but they will say you know we have to uh, uh, we are being fast we are skipping food it is only fasting so they will skip the food and they will sleep and they will do their own works and they will say fasting is it right or wrong see as long as they have a part of the day where they have spent time with god um it's fine i'll tell you why i'm saying this for example when you're a working professional and you're fasting right it's not easy like you're working also you're fasting also uh, it it gets very taxing for the body and for for your um, uh, or for the body so maybe such people you come back home you rest little bit but in the evening you spend time with god so we may not see them spending time with god and what we are thinking is oh this man is fasting and uh, he is only working whole day and then he is going and sleeping we don't know that they are actually spending time with god so my point is um if as long as they take time with the lord it makes sense to skip the meals but if you know if they don't spend time with god whether they are sleeping in between or, or not uh, that's fine but they should spend time with god you understood what i'm saying yes, if if uh, we are being fasting and without spending time with god it is simply waste we can say that yeah 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 so if we are fasting and we're not spending time with the lord what's the point it's a waste of time we can say yeah that that's not the right way of doing it we need to spend time with god okay sister gertrude has a question she saying how to stop gossiping okay how to stop gossiping um i i think we need to uh, i can only think of two things right now one is the fear of god when we fear god right that god is watching me at all times whether somebody is watching or not watching listening or not listening god is there so when we walk with the fear of god obviously all the gossip everything will come down second is get busy if you're busy you don't have time for useless activities like you don't have time for yourself only where will you go sit and gossip about somebody else i think that's a very practical thing to do just get busy with your life do all good things be busy so that's nice okay sister i hope that helps you yes sister thank you Okay, sure. And uh, uh, Nidel is saying, "How does fasting help a believer?" So this whole chapter you have to read again, Nidel. 
to get that answer. So that's what I'm trying to uh, address. I'll also talk about the blessings. So then you know you would uh, understand the value of fasting. All right. So any other questions regarding what we have covered till now? All right. So if there are no questions, then we'll proceed. I told that we look at the blessings. But before that, we'll see um, you know, for what we, we need to fast. Okay, so we can fast for many reasons. Um, first of all, we can fast for ourselves, or we can fast for somebody. Let's say somebody is sick. Okay, we can fast for them. We can fast for groups of people, like we can fast for our church, we can fast for our city, um, we can fast for our community. So we can fast in all these ways. And um, uh, why do we fast? I already said repentance. If we want to show uh, our humility before God, we can fast. Then we can fast when we are um, uh, seeking God, seeking God for God to work in our lives. Okay, maybe we are in a season where we are thinking, uh, God, I want you to do something. I want you to intervene in my life. I want you to make a way. So we are seeking God. We can fast. When we fast, we'll see that you know, God is working in our lives. So seeking God uh, is another reason why we should, we can fast. We can fast for deliverance. All the scripture references are there, but I'm not going through because there are many, many of them. So deliverance. Deliverance is um, any oppression of the devil in our lives. Okay, it can be in the form of uh, some, um, you know, some uh, addiction, some disturbance of the mind, or disturbance in your body, your health. It can be uh, in our circumstances, like maybe we are facing lack or poverty, or um, you know, uh, confusion or problem in relationships. So, so many issues are there which are caused by Satan, and uh, we want to break it right then we can fast when we fast we will experience deliverance through god's power we can fast for protection so when we um, seek god maybe you're traveling somewhere uh, or uh, god is calling you to go to some place you want god's protection we can fast and pray and say god uh, you cover us we can fast and pray to um, develop a hunger for god so for me to understand the word, for me to receive the word, for the word to work in my life, it's like, you know how when you sow the seed, what does a farmer do? He'll first dig it, he'll put water, he'll do everything, he'll make it ready. Then they'll sow the seed. At that point, it is good ground. Suppose he doesn't do that, it's very hard. And if you put the seed, it won't take root in that soil. So similarly, if you want to get a heart ready, Right? We can go through a season of fasting. Then our heart becomes ready. Then you take time in the word of God. Then you go, uh, okay, maybe attend some classes, listen to the word. The word, to receive the word, our heart is prepared. And we are able to understand it well and apply it in our lives. We can uh, fast uh, to pray for God's mercy. Mercy means... Um, when, when somebody deserves a punishment, but we are saying, God, um, let it not be. The, the person, or maybe us, we deserve a punishment for what has happened. But we are saying, God, forgive us. Please forgive us. Uh, let us not receive the punishment for the actions. That simply means we are asking for God's mercy. Right, so fasting helps. Maybe we want to pray for ourselves or our families, and we say, God, extend your mercy, Lord. You know, maybe uh, our family they didn't know that's why they were worshiping idols or you know, they were doing all these ungodly things, but now we know, forgive us. Right, so we are praying a prayer like that. For that, also, fasting is helpful uh, and it helps us express our uh, prayer to God. 
so we could pray for mercy uh, we can also fast to intercede for others there are many needs in intercession we have seen that okay we are, we can pray for uh, blessing on people's lives or direction in their lives healing uh, provision so many such things so for intercession if you're an intercessor you remember i shared about this man called um, father nash he used to pray but he used to also fast fast and pray why for the city he used to pray so that the spirit of god will move powerfully on the city right so for intercession fasting really helps we can pray with fasting and that will be effective we can also uh, fast when we have to select um, leaders so in acts chapter 13 when the elders of the church they were fasting they were praying at that time holy spirit gave them the instruction now you have to uh, ask barnabas and paul to go into a missionary work right so then they commissioned them and said okay you both holy spirit is asking you to go for um, missionary work so you go so the same way when we we want to appoint leaders for different ministries when we fast we can know the heart of god whom does god want to do a particular task right and then we appoint them according to god's instruction and then it becomes a blessing so for that we can fast we can also fast for um, uh, ministry so when we want to serve god you know when paul uh, writes about himself in the book of corinthians uh, he says that um, with many fastings he says many fastings so that means in his ministry he used to fast a lot to preach the gospel to to um, you know uh, plant churches to appoint leaders so to do his ministry work he used to fast so even when we do ministry to be effective for the anointing of the holy spirit right we can fast then what happens uh, uh, that anointing the presence of god anointing is nothing but the presence and the empowering of the spirit of god it becomes stronger on our lives and uh, we are able to minister powerfully right and it can also give place for many more signs wonders miracles to take place so uh, as a minister of god you know th we are those who are called into ministry uh, let's say you want to go tomorrow you have to preach or next month you have to preach in some conference or some place take time to fast and pray and say holy spirit anoint me give me the words so then we become uh, a vessel for um, you know god's spirit to move so fasting helps in ministry as well so these are all the reasons why uh, one can fast or also we may be seeking direction in our lives at some point we are saying god you need to show me what shall i do uh, what do you want me to do what when we fast and pray it the answer can become clear got it so fasting helps with that as well to find direction uh, and so these are all the reasons why we can fast and here in the notes there are examples of uh, different people jehoshaphat uh, and the people of juda they fasted they fasted when they were going into battle because they wanted god to give them the victory remember i said deliverance so when we want deliverance from the enemy fast fast and pray then nehemiah nehemiah why did he fast because uh, he heard about his own people that uh, the walls of Jerus jerusalem are broken so he was very upset and he he wanted to help his own people but he didn't know how to help so he was very burdened and uh, to know what is that vision god you give me that vision so that i can go and do something to get that vision nehemiah fasted he prayed then god told him what you have to do okay you go build the wall 52 days they built the wall so uh, in order to get the vision about what is it i need to do in the next assignment we can fast we can pray ezra ezra um, with the people they fasted they fasted for direction they fasted to repent right to repent uh, as a community they wanted to repent before god they all fasted 
Okay, in fact, I think it's Ezra only. He says, like, all should fast, including the animals, because we want to repent before God. So no food for anyone. Repent before the Lord. So that was how Ezra fasted. Esther, Esther and the Jewish people, they fasted because everything was against them. And uh, they wanted the favor of God. They wanted the favor of the king. Right? They wanted the report, the decree, which was made against them to change. So they wanted something supernatural to take place. So uh, they fasted. And God gave them the deliverance, the report, the de decree against them changed. Okay, uh, It's amazing what happened in the, in the book of Esther. So when Esther, and Esther found herself in a difficult position, her, her option was, OK, we don't have a solution. Best, fast. Let God do something, because we can't do anything in this matter. Right? So that's how she took it up. And uh, uh, there was a supernatural intervention. Daniel. You know, Daniel also is an amazing man of God who fasted a lot. And uh, when he fasted, one of the main reasons we see for him fasting is um, he used to fast to get understanding. So once in Daniel chapter 2, there is a dream which uh, you know the king sees. And uh, he tells Daniel, I need an interpretation. I saw this dream. You have to tell me the meaning of that dream. Now, Daniel does not know the dream also. What will he interpret? But he goes into like prayer. His life is like that, life of prayer, um, you know, fasting. And uh, later on, he sees some vision in, you know, the further ahead in the chapters. He doesn't understand the vision. Then again, he's praying with fasting. God gives him understanding. Okay, where he's lacking understanding, he fasts to get understanding, to know what is the meaning of the vision, right? So he fasts for that. He fasts for the fulfillment of God's promises. There are some promises in scripture for the uh, people of Israel. They are in Babylon, in captivity. So for the fulfillment of, of those promises, he fasts. So there are many reasons why Daniel fasts. Okay, but he was a man of prayer, a man of fasting. And we see that God gave a lot of revelation so much revelation you see he saw the things which are taking place now in his prophecies way back how amazing how amazing but uh, when you fast even to hear from the holy spirit you kind of uh, uh, remember we keep saying be sensitive to the spirit uh, our, our mind should be sensitive our spirit should be sensitive how to make it sensitive fasting will make it sensitive so Daniel, a man who received a lot of visions, a lot of dreams, because prayer and fasting was a part of his life. So um, we can also expect the same thing if we engage in prayer and fasting. So Daniel is a good example. Then Jesus. OK, so can you imagine if there is one person who doesn't need to pray, who doesn't need to fast, it's Jesus. But he did. Jesus prayed. He also fasted 40 days. Before his ministry started, Jesus fasted for 40 days. And then we read in uh, Luke chapter uh, 4, I think, like he came with the power of the Spirit. When he finished his fasting and he came for ministry, he came back, he came with the power of the Holy Spirit. So 40 days of fasting. One of the things that happened was the anointing on God became so strong on the life of Jesus. Okay, then he went and we see, right, like people are being healed, people are being delivered, the, the dead are being raised. Amazing, amazing work of God. But even Jesus fasted and he fasted for 40 days. Um, yeah, and even in the church of Antioch, um, Paul and Barnabas, these are all people in the book of Acts who fasted. So uh, fasting is very powerful. And God has given us uh, this particular practice to uh, actually to enjoy. Okay, Because when we fast, we are drawing closer to God. We are uh, hearing better from God. We are seeing miracles uh, in our lives. So it becomes exciting. In the beginning, it's very hard uh, to say no to our bodily needs. But when you keep practicing it, right, it, um, it becomes a part of you. 
so like even for me i never used to fast nobody told me about fasting but one uh, sister in our youth group she was the first one who said uh, okay do you fast i said no i don't fast she said no you need to learn how to fast okay let us both fast together so on the days when she used to fast she used to tell me and then we both used to fast the whole day then i used to go to her house and then you know we'll pray and all that and then have our lunch so that's how we learn we learn how to do it and um, I try to practice it at least maybe once a week if possible that's what we try here in the bible college one of the days um fridays usually is a fasting for all of us so discipline ourselves right to pick at least one day a week uh, it can be any day but generally we all pick uh, friday because you know the work week comes to an end maybe it's easier to fast on that day or more you could we could uh, pick two days a week um, some ministries like if you read um, from the methodist uh, you know ministry like uh, john wesley and all they uh, they used to tell all their team members to fast twice a week wednesday and friday so each ministry they have their own way of doing things but the point is uh, it needs to be a regular practice because it is so beneficial for the believer it is so beneficial for the minister of god now we may skip one meal two meals uh, or a whole day we don't eat it's up to you it's up to the capacity that your body carries right you can push to the next level each time to draw closer to god to spend more time with god but the whole point is as one of us were, was pointing out spend time with god it's not about how many days we can fast okay we can go and boast and say oh i did i mean i've seen people talk like oh i did uh, 80 days i did 120 days continuously i did this i did that all that's fine but is it a chosen fast before the lord that is the question we have to answer right so i hope many doubts are cleared already fine so let's now look at the blessings which are listed in isaiah 58 so when we fast what are the blessings that we can expect one of you can read the whole passage then i'll explain it verse 8 to verse 14 isaiah 58 verse 8 8 to verse 14 can i read sister yes yes sister gatrun okay verse 8 then mm. your light shall break forth like the morning your healing shall spring forth speedily and your righteousness shall go before you the glory of the lord shall be your rear guard was nine then you shall call and the lord will answer you shall cry and he will say here i am if you take away the yoke from your mitts the pointing of the finger and speaking wickedness If you extend your soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul then your light shall dawn dawn in the darkness and your darkness shall be as the noonday verse 11 the lord will guide you continually and satisfy your soul in drought and strengthen your bones you shall be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters do not fail verse 12 well, those from among you shall build the old waste places you shall raise up the foundations of many generations and you shall be called the repairer of the breach and the restorer of streets of dwell in 13 if you turn away your foot from the sabbath from doing your pleasure on my holy day and call the sabbath a delight the holy day of the lord honorable and shall honor him not doing your own ways nor finding your own pleasure nor speaking your own words was 14 then you shall delight yourself in the lord and i will cause you to ride on the high hills of the earth and feed you with the heritage of jacob your father the mouth of the lord has spoken amen then thank you sister thank you so much for reading that entire passage so we see blessings interspersed with 
uh, the instructions that we've already looked at. So I won't dwell on the instructions. I'll simply go with the blessings. So the first blessing that we can see here in verse 8, it says, then your light shall break forth like the morning. So light represents, um, in, in its broadest sense, it represents God. Okay, uh, when we have light in our lives, that means we have God's intervention in our lives. But if there is darkness, that means God's presence, God's work is not there. So we are told when we fast in the correct way, with the proper um, you know attention to many things, then light shall break forth like the morning. So in our life, we'll see every day that God is working. God is there. God is revealing himself in different ways. So darkness goes away and we experience the presence of God in a very powerful way. And God intervening in our life circumstances. So when we say God intervening, it means uh, God's goodness is there, uh, God's deliverance is there, his blessings are there, his prosperity is there. So God, very clearly, God is working in our lives that we can see when we fast. Okay, So that is the first blessing. So whenever we, we are fasting, we can take this passage, we can declare, Lord, you said in your word, light will break forth in my darkness. So I believe, God, that you are going to intervene in my life, in my darkness. You are going to uh, show your glory. You are going to reveal your power. Uh, so when light comes, what happens to the darkness? Imagine this, this whole hall is dark, okay, pitch dark. And one of you comes in, you switch on one light. What will happen? Immediately darkness goes. When light comes, darkness has to run away. There's no other option. right? Immediately darkness has to leave. So that is what will happen to us when we fast the right way. When God comes, every evil, every darkness, it has to go. There is no options. right? So that is what light means. It means the presence of God, the work of God becomes very real in our lives. Now light also represents many other things. Light means um, clarity. So when, when you put the light, you can see things clear. right? So clarity will come. Um, direction. We are looking for direction. It will come because light is there. You got it. So that is what it means. We will get a clear vision, clarity, revelation, understanding. So light in every sense will come into our lives. That is a blessing which God says, I will bless you. If you fast in this right way. Now, what is the next blessing in the same verse? It says, your healing shall spring forth speedily. Your healing shall spring forth speedily. That means that um, in the mind, in the body, right? Uh, in, every, in every aspect of who we are, we will find healing. So we may have been hurt, we may be in pain, so much is going on inside us. But when we fast in the right way, God says, I will heal you. You'll, you'll be healed of your sickness, of your uh, emotional troubles. So we can expect that. So if I want to, you know, some people want to recover in their emotional person. Fasting is very good. It will help your emotional person heal. Okay, so fasting will help in that. All the wounds God will heal is what he says. Now let, let's look at the next blessing in the same uh, scripture. It says, and your righteousness shall go before you. Okay, righteousness shall go before you. That simply means that righteousness will make a way for us. See, we do the right things. And what do people say? Even if you do the right things, there are no results. You know, nothing will happen. So many people are doing right, but they don't get the results. People talk like that. But God is promising us, if you walk in righteousness, if you declare that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, then what will happen? Whatever righteousness you do, it will make a way for you. I will bless you. Okay? You will have a reward. Your righteousness will pave the way for you. And God is promising that. So 
when righteousness um, paves the way for us, we will be able to walk um, with God's protection, his security. God will put honor on our lives. Okay, uh, we'll, we'll begin to see that uh, there is honor coming our way. How is it all happening? God is making it happen. Right? So God is saying, I'll make, I will bless you for all the righteousness that you walk in. So that is a blessing that we can expect when we fast the right way. Next, uh, in that same verse, it says, the glory of the Lord shall be your rare guard. So this means the glory of the Lord, there'll be a trail of his glory behind us. You remember the, the people of Israel? When they were walking, there was a glory cloud, right? Which was covering them. So what is glory? Glory is God's presence at the highest level. Very intense presence of God is glory. We say, oh, the glory of God. God's presence covers us in a very powerful way. Wherever we go, we'll see God's presence. And in God's presence, what will happen? God's works will happen. You know, people will get healed. People will get blessed. And um, wherever we go, we'll see there's a blessing because God is with us. His presence is with us. His glory is with us. So that is an assurance that God gives us. And we are also divinely protected by the glory of God. Now in verse 9, uh, it says, Then you shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry and he will say, here I am. It simply means quick answers to our prayers. You know, we are asking God, God, show me this. Help me, um, you know, to receive an answer. God says, immediately I'll answer you. If you're a person who fasts with the right attitude, quick answers come to our lives. God says, I will answer you immediately, speedily. So that is another blessing that we can receive. Are you all with me or is it getting little heavy? Okay, great. Let's continue. Okay, let's look at the next uh, blessing here. Verse 10. Then your light shall dawn in the darkness and your darkness shall be as the noonday. It simply means there'll be no darkness in your life. Okay, and we already covered about light earlier. So that's what it means. Now moving on to verse 11 here. It says, the Lord will guide you continually. Continuously, God will show. Okay, you do this. Next, next, next. We will never lack God's instruction in our lives. How amazing, right? And God himself is saying, I'll give you, I'll tell you how you should live your life. If you fast the correct way, this blessing is also there for us. So whenever you fast, in fact, you can take these uh, scriptures and declare it first and then get into your fasting because God is saying you can claim all this. Lord, you said you will guide me when I fast. So I'm trusting you for the blessings of guidance. Uh, verse 11, it also says, satisfy your soul in drought. It means even when we go through a difficult time, we will have enough. Do you remember the children of Israel? When they went through the wilderness, they didn't have, uh, you know, any bakeries. They didn't have any fast food, no swiggy, right? So they were all hungry. Oh my goodness, we are in the wilderness. There's no food. There's no water. But did God provide for them? Yeah? Every day, fresh food in the wilderness. Same thing God is saying. You may find yourself in the wilderness, in a difficult place, yet... I will satisfy your soul. You will not lack any good thing, right? That's the promise of God that we can depend on. And we say that, God, uh, my life will never be empty. You'll always meet my needs. You will help me to have a satisfied life. I will be satisfied, okay? Claim these promises. Next, um, verse 11, strengthen your bones. What is it? Strengthen your bones. Strengthen your bones, it has to do with health, good health. Um, and uh, bones are the framework that holds us, right? So even that, that deep part of us, um, God says, I'll heal you. I'll make you strong. So we can claim strength from the Lord and um, uh, pray that. Next, verse 11 says, you shall be like a watered garden. 
uh, and in continuation, like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. So it means uh, a state of complete well-being. Even if you take the definition of health, uh, WHO and all, they, they'll say it's not just the absence of disease, but it's you know the, the presence of good, like mental, social, uh, emotional. So health in all at all levels uh, has to be good. That's when we say a person is in their optimum health. What is God saying? He's saying, I'll make you like that, complete well-being. You will be like a watered garden. So if you close your eyes and think of a beautiful garden, it's green, it's um, got a lot of flowers, fruits, uh, birds are coming in. It's healthy. Right. But what is the opposite? Something which is so dry and, you know, it's brown. Uh, there's a lot of heat. There's no water there. There's no blessing there. But God is saying, I will make your life like that garden, that beautiful garden. You will thrive. OK, thrive means um, uh, like being very fruitful, being very uh, successful. Right? So we can these are all scriptures we can claim and say, thank you, God, you're going to make my life like a well-watered garden or and like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. That means it won't dry up. Continuously, there will be water. Continuously, uh, you know, there will be God's blessing, fullness, success. So these are things that we can claim. So let's um, touch upon a few more uh, blessings here. Those among you shall build the old waste places. That simply means God will give us the capacity to build even those things which are destroyed. So especially in the, uh, in the church, in the ministry. What this means is he, we will become a blessing. Maybe there are people, they're going through um, you know, a, a tough time, uh, their, their uh, life is destroyed because of a wrong decision or a failed you know a failed marriage something has happened that has broken their life but god says i will give you the capacity to be a blessing to them you will help rebuild okay bring restoration in people's lives that's what it means and uh, in that same verse 12 you shall raise up the foundations of many generations that means that uh, the work that we do we will be able to do a strong work, a good work. It will be a blessing, not just for now, but even for generations to come. So our work that we do will be so blessed that it will be a blessing for the generations to come. So how amazing, isn't it? These are all the promises of God. And verse 12, you shall be a repairer of the breach. Um, this, again, means that... Um, um, we, we will be those who will bring protection for the city, for the people. Okay? Uh, so because of our lives, there will be protection upon the people. Then uh, we have verse 12, it says, restorer of streets to dwell in. So again, a blessing upon the city, restoring the city, um, and uh, bringing healing to the communities. A lot of this has to do with, uh, you know, ministry. So we can claim it and say, God, you said you will help me become that person who brings restoration, brings protection. So use me, uh, use my life. Uh, in verse 14, it says, then you shall delight in the Lord. So if we are struggling to love God, to be passionate about God, when we fast, God is saying, I'll help you to delight in me. So our love for God can also become stronger. Uh, verse 14, I will cause you to ride on the high hills of the earth. That means that in our life, in our lifetime, uh, we will be victorious. God will put honor on our lives. We can expect that when we fast in the right way. Verse 14 says, feed you with the heritage of Jacob, your father. So that simply means we will inherit the blessings promised to our fathers. 
okay so that blessing will not go away it will come to us because god has uh, spoken in his word so we can claim all these blessings um, i've just done it in a very quick way otherwise we can explain so much uh, in these matters let me pause now if there are any questions or comments we can address that but i hope you have a good idea about uh, fasting now okay right Ma'am. Yes. Like I have to do fasting today, mm -hmm. but even at the same time I have to travel travel somewhere. Okay. So in that way, should I fast or should I uh, postpone my fast? Um. See, usually, I mean, try to do this. This is what I try to do. If you have decided to do something, you do it, no matter what. Like maybe you're working, you're traveling, but you plan in such a way. that you are able to do it okay only like emergency you just can't handle you're not feeling well then you skip it but it's so actually it's possible to fast when you're uh, traveling also if you really want to yeah but you have to make some time that day to pray it's not just skipping a meal otherwise they say right it's only dieting if you're only skipping meals it's not fasting or uh, we also say like it's not bhook hartal sometimes you know you just say we I, god i will not eat you have to bless me god is like what are you doing that's not the right way to fast okay fasting is so different as we have seen anything else uh, nelson in our place there is a person uh -huh. uh, who wants to fast okay but if he stays hunger for long time he feels unconscious and means falls down like right? chakkar yeah so yeah in that case how he should uh, fast correct see um so we do understand for uh, some people there may be medical issues right they may actually not be able to fast at all so then they can do maybe an activity fast or as um, we heard take some time alone by yourself to meditate upon the lord so there are many other options if they cannot skip meals so you can go by the medical advice so um and i think for most of us if we skip one or two meals it's okay we are fine most of us are fine yeah so understand your level your limit and stretch only to that limit okay don't put yourself in a dangerous place okay i've seen people doing that also it's not it's of no use because you're you're troubling yourself you're troubling others around you okay and then uh, we have to come pastors have to come and talk and say you have to stop this right so don't don't do dangerous things okay all right so seems like uh, we are okay if you have more questions you can like come and ask personally on or post it on the uh, stream page we'll address it for now let's close and again somebody from the online batch uh, could you please lead us in prayer ma'am may I please pray yes dear heavenly father I thank you in the precious name of our holy Lord Jesus Christ that in your mercy and in your grace you have given me this opportunity to pray unto your feet. I also thank that you have led your daughter Nancy through your holy spirit to teach us the most precious truth of prayer and fasting. Everyone in the class including physical and online class the words which we have learned today may always abide in our heart forever and ever. 
for your glory and for your praise. In holy and precious Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Brother Pankaj. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, sister. Thank you. Bye.